Well, hello, coffee time friends. It is lunchtime. Mm -mm -mm. I've done got flour on me and I've not even opened the bag. How does that happen? I'm getting ready to make some homemade cornbread. Now, Mama is taking the day off, I reckon, because she ain't done nothing. Oh, here she is. Sorry. I went and got flour and <laughs> went and got some more. Oil. I got up this morning hankering for some beans. So I came to Mama's, of course, because she's got beans. And um, so I looked them and washed them and put them in the crock pot. Look at me. And um, she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm making lunch or making something. I want some beans. And I said, I've been wanting them for two weeks. Which I really ain't. It just seems that way when you've been wanting them. And she said, well, that sounds delicious. And you done got them going. I said, you got that right. So, now I'm getting ready to make some cornbread. I'm going to put my, this is Self Rising White Lily Flour. You got a puff up on you, Mama, see? We've used this my whole life. Mama, did you ever use anything else? For no, 53 not years. As, of, not as long as I can get white lily. 53 I mean. years of white lily. We like it. We're not, we're not sponsored by white lily. But uh, we sponsor them because we love their products. Uh, we ain't sponsored by nobody. We're not sponsored. Okay, so there is the white lily. And it didn't puff up, Mama. You proud of him? Yeah, I'm proud of you. You have to take the little victories. If you, this is a victory. You did a good job. There you go, Mama. You're this little cup right here. <laughs> I don't know how old it is. I I don't think it has a name on it. It's just a. There ain't no name or nothing. It's just a coffee cup. Probably come in a set. It's the only one we got that would like it. It's the only one that survived. Uh, it's been in this flower bin my whole life. I don't know. I'll be 29. Ooh. It's been there a while. Let's just leave it at that. So in my bowl, I have got two cups of white lily cornmeal mix. And I'm going to put in a cup of flour. Not it's hardly a cup. Three Rivers cornmeal mix and white lily. No, this is not. Do you not have three rivers on this, do you? In the cornmeal. Oh, okay. White lily flour. Three Mama says correction has been made. Mama will correct you whether you want to be corrected or not. That's right. This is some oil. I'm putting just a little bit in there. It'll make it a little good, a little bit better. And then I'm going to put in a good country egg. I'm going to take my chances. I ain't no, going to test this not. egg. I think it's egg. Egg, are you any good? I think you are. You look good on the outside. There ain't nothing wrong with that egg right there. That is your bowl. She's strict. I've told you. You don't want to waste flour and meal because well, you Ah, Mama, it wouldn't be no waste. Okay, Mama, this egg, it looks wonderful. I'll put that shell right there. There's nothing wrong with that egg, just like we assumed. How many bad eggs do you find, Mama, when you're searching? I always assume you put them in one bowl and dump them in your mix. I ain't never seen you really... There's all... I have found bad eggs over the time. Once upon a time? No, I've found several of them. Yeah, when they're flattened out and they color don't look good, that's... I don't like using them. I'm shaking up some buttermilk here. This is whole cultured buttermilk. We like to use the cultured whole buttermilk. This is just pike country buttermilk. That's what we have at the store. Save a lot has Save it. Save a lot has it. And I'm just going to pour that right in here. And I put about a cup in there. I didn't measure it, but I've made enough cornbread I know. So that's a cup. And we've shown you how to make cornbread before. So if you're writing the recipe down, it's two cups of cornbread. Uh, buttermilk cornbread mix, three rivers, Mama says. And, uh, three rivers or Martha cornmeal mix. And um, a cup of flour, one egg, and that was one cup of buttermilk, and I'm going to put another cup because I can tell you it ain't where I want it. 
I want my cornbread, my cornbread mix mixed up good and thin. Not soupy. I'll show you. Not pancake batter either. Because I like good moist cornbread. I don't want really thick cornbread. Well, thick is okay, but I want it. I don't want my batter to be thick to start with. My dad used to like, and I've told you this before, he called it greasy bread. Mom don't care for it. So we don't have it much anymore, uh, unless I'm just making me a pound. But he wanted you to put about three good tablespoons of bacon grease in it, and that would make it real greasy. And he'd say, make me some good greasy bread. And I would, because that's what he wanted. And... Uh, Mom, do you even put oil in yours? No. I put oil in the skillet good. We put oil in the skillet and we do get it hot. It does make a difference to us, anyway, on the crunchiness of it. And I want it to cook. When I pour it in there, I want to hear it sizzle. Some people put it in there cold and I'm sure it works. And they'll put uh, solid Crisco in it and do it. But we put oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, or we will use solid Crisco and let it melt. All of it works equally well that I can tell. We don't use a lot of solid oil meats. I mean, lard or shortening because it's he'll go back solid and it's not good for your. Yeah, we try lard. to use oil, oil if we can, but we do use Crisco butter flavor Crisco for our biscuits. Now that's solid. Now this is how I like my cornbread. I like for it to be to it won't. I went, well, actually, I went a little thinner than that. So what I'll do is add just a little bit of water to this. I'll open up another buttermilk. You got another buttermilk candy? Sure. I do add water sometimes instead of all buttermilk. Shake, shake, shake. You can make hot water cornbread. That's a southern thing. You can make, it's just where you use basically cornmeal and put hot water in it. Um. A lot of times, if we make hot water cornbread, we fry it, and it's just sort of a real thin, and it just spreads out. Then there's lacy cornbread, and that's where it just, it's even thinner, and it spreads out, and it kind of gets bubbles in it, so it looks like a piece of lace. And there's uh, cornbread flitters. Did you shake this one? I uh, didn't used it. I didn't use it. I don't remember if I shook it or not, Mama. Okay, now this is feeling right. You can feel it. Once you've made enough of it, you'll stir it and you'll feel, and it'll feel like you want it to feel. My granny used to say that, and I think, what is she talking about? I want it to where it'll come off real easy in ribbons. I don't want it to where, it'll, where it clumps much. I want it to be pretty liquidy. Now I'm going to put this in the oven on about 400 degrees in a hot iron skillet. And I want to, I want you to hear that sizzle, because that's what makes good cornbread. Okay, the skillet is steaming hot. It just come out of the oven. Now watch this. This is what gives you that good sear on that cornbread. To me, you hear it? That's good cornbread right there, folks. That's the making of some good cornbread. And I'll clean that out in just a second. Might even make a smaller pound. I made a little extra. That is already cooking around the edges. Now I'm going to put this back in the oven. And we'll have cornbread in about 25 minutes. Okay, we are going to do another little small batch. Because I had plenty left. And I mixed up, mixed up good. This will just be a little thin pound. This little 6 inch. You hear that? That is good cornbread. I know people who sprinkle a little bit of cornmeal on the bottom of their skillet or a little flour, different things I've heard to give it a crunch. And uh, we're going to share this with a friend of ours. So we're going to take some beans and a little bitty pound of cornbread. And that'll be their supper. Or supper or something. Mm -mm -mm. If you make beans, you don't want to eat them all. There's always somebody you can share them with. Make them a little pound of, pound of cornbread and some beans. Mmm, I like that for a little snack. A little, here you go. Here's your supper. Mama just put it back in the oven. Ready to go. 
We'll be having beans and cornbread. I heard it. <clears throat> Maybe it needs a little WD-40. Maybe a little dab of oil or something. Well, put some of that, that canola oil on it. I always was taught not to use vegetable oil on um, um, door frames. <laughs> on any machine or anything like that, it's got a component in it that don't work with it. The metal to use Mama, tell them about these suckers. Now this ain't all suckers. There's a little bit of mint in here that I broke off yesterday just to have in here fresh. You can cut your mint, put it in some water, have it handy for your tea or just to smell good or whatever. But this right here is a tomato that she broke off. I accidentally <clears throat> broke that one. Let me take this mint out. <clears throat> oh, I smell that mint. It's so strong. This is a tomato top. She broke it off picking weeds yesterday. So what she's done is, you see where this fork is here? This will cause some roots to come here. She's cut it off there. Going to keep it in water, and that will grow roots. And you can plant this and have a, a tomato plant. If your tomato plants, if you, where we was always called suckers that come up in it. And in your tomato plants, you know, you'll have this little. Well, tell them what suckers are. Then. That's what I'm trying to tell. The, on the very bottom of the plant. Well, there showing. are any horse where there's a V like this and the two stems. These are the two stems. And there's one that comes up right here in the center of these two V's. And that's called a sucker. And what you do is when it gets up pretty good size, or you know, you can handle it and plant it, you just go in there and break that sucker off. And then I always brought them in, put them in a quart jar and put them in a wind or something where they get some light and they will root. Sometimes you'll have them to rot. I guess it's the different signs and stuff. But now I pour, break them off and I start me some and I use them for late tomatoes when you can't find tomato plants. We I do late tomatoes, late beans, late corn. There's all kinds of late crops you can do at the moment. Yeah, you just, and I like to have fresh tomatoes on and and I like to have a little beans in the late summer or fall in order to have fresh green beans then. My Christmas. uncle's goal, mom's brother, was to have tomatoes at Christmas. Christmas. And he usually always did. No, they weren't outside. But he would grow them outside. Well, of course we got cut off. Anyhow, my uncle always wanted to do tomatoes at Christmas. He would keep them as long as he could, right up to the very last frost that he could keep them. Or the very first frost. And then he would pick them all green and put them in his basement and try to keep them. And he usually had tomatoes for Christmas dinner. And that was always his treat. And um, it's always special. You know, to have some tomatoes that long. Well, Mama just took the cornbread out of the oven. And she's going to turn it out. Now, you all know what turning out the cornbread is. So, Mama, turn that cornbread out. Show them what you're doing there. Now, watch it. Watch it not come out? Yes. Well, come here. Where you running? I'm trying to chase you down with the camera. Okay, Mama, turn that cornbread out. <laughs> Watch it mess up. Mama, it'll be perfect. There's a piece of perfect corn pone. Cornbread pone. Look at that, folks. Perfectly brown, perfectly good cornbread. Mama can do some good cornbread. Look that at that cast you. iron skillet. That was you, then. Look at that cast iron skillet. Perfectly seasoned. Not a stick in place in it. Sometimes they stick a little bit. We used to have one. I don't know if it's a Wagner or what, but I mean, we love Wagner. But it had a W on it, and we always knew that meant will stick in one little spot about the size of a quarter. And it would always stick in one little spot. We tried to sand it or uh, clean it good and season it again. Finally, we got it worked on, but uh, for a while, we'd say, oh, that's the W. It will stick. But uh, one had a G and one had a W. One was a Griswold, one was a uh, Wagner. I think so. this is this. I don't know. That may be the Wagner now because we did get it fixed after enough season. No. That's H C H E. I don't pass up a good iron skillet. If I find one at a yard sale, or if I find one at a secondhand store, I always try to find me a good iron skillet. So we've got a bunch of them. So. Folks, this is going to be so
supper lunch. I guess we're going to call this and late this lunch. this one, I ain't never baked cornbread in. This one, I don't know. Oh, bake. Mama's going to show you again. It probably won't come out. It's not. Baked. It's never had cornbread in it? Well, I am used to years ago bake some little. Because well, ain't no way we're going to make a pound of cornbread that little for us to eat. Uh, but I've not used it. It's coming up. It's coming up, Mama. Uh, in years and years, so I've used it for meats and everything. Well, look at that. Perfect little pound of cornbread. It's like the big pound and the little pound. And these was in there about 28 minutes. So, your depends on your oven. You can't go by time, what we tell y'all, because some ovens is 30. Now, on our Easy Bake Oven, the KitchenAid oven, it takes about 25 minutes or 22 minutes. Sometimes make a pound of cornbread, depending on how thick we make it. That's another thing. It depends on how thick you make it. It depends on how thin you make your meal. So, uh, just when it gets brown on the top, though, it's usually good and brown on the bottom. So, just remember that when you're making cornbread. So, give us just one second, and we'll be back over here with our pinto beans and cornbread. A little bit of homemade chow-chow. Mm -hmm. And it's a plate of homegrown, mama-grown tomatoes. And this is a Vidalia onion chunked up, ready to go with them beans. You talk about good southern eating. We have to have us a pot of beans at least every three or four weeks. Can't go that long if we can help it. So you hang up just one second. And it's time to eat. There's the beans. They're good, brown, rich, gray, uh, juice, cornbread. Mama's eating a little bite. She won't eat much. And uh, look at that bean. Good Vidalia, some homegrown, and a piece of cornbread. Mmm. Hey, Mama. Oh, no, you've got a joke for me. All these tomatoes and stuff out of the garden, garden time, this is a garden joke. So, um, what's long green and slowly turning red? Long green and slowly turning red? Mm -hmm. uh, watermelon is one thing. Let's see what else can be. It could be a cucumber holding its breath, Mama. Oh, no. <laughs> this is Chow Chow, and we're about out. So we're we'll making some more of this. Mama don't know it yet. My but we, squash ain't made, so I don't know if we're We'll going. buy squash. I'll buy squash. If it <laughs> chow Chow is a mixture of squash and uh, cucumbers and onions and peppers, uh, peppers and, and pickling spices and... It's wonderful. I make it just, well, it's squash. You want some chow chow? Yeah, it's squash chow chow, this is, or squash pickles. I it's make a slice squash pickle, and I, we like the taste of it, but Don wanted some chunky stuff to go in his bag. I like the chow, this is what I like to So I started chunking it up, and I make it like my slice squash pickles, but it's really good. And then I also make a corn relish. Yeah, that was off my mom's. All right, let's bless our food and we'll eat it up. Dearly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to protect this wonderful meal. Dear Lord, and just pray that you'll be with it for the nourishment of our bodies, dear Lord, and dear Lord, be with all the prayer requests that are turned in, and we we want to continue to pray a special prayer for Mama Sue and all those that are suffering from different ailments, dear Lord, and just pray that you'll answer each and every one of them in your power and your glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Mama, give them a taste. Since I made them, you can judge them, I guess. Oh, boy. Mmm. I'm going to tell you right now, they're good. They are good. Mmm. Cooked for about four and a half hours. Start them out in the crock pot. You ended them up in the kettle. That's your butter one, Mama, right there. Okay, I don't want my butter one in here. No. This cornbread is so good. That little bit of flour makes it rise just a little bit. The egg makes it good and fluffy. Mmm. Good. Please tell me that cornbread, Mama. Well, I'm going to eat it right here with my beans right there. <laughs> good stuff. Mm -hmm. A little bit of Dahlia onion. A little bit of chow chow. A little bit of cornbread. I don't like to put my cornbread all at once because it soaks up all my juice. I like a good juicy bean. So I put it in every bite at a time. That's the hard way. Yeah. But Is that the way you do it too? Yeah, that's the way you get it from, I guess. 
You always do it the hard way, Mom. Mm. Your daddy had crumbled up a whole bowl of bread in it. And he didn't. He wanted beans. He didn't want no juice. Mm. You can't beat a good pinto bean. No, them tomatoes is good. That one is. Oh, the tomatoes is good. It's a few romas, a few. Uh, what you call that, big and mama? Beef steak. Beef steak. Mm. All kinds of good. We are truly blessed. Yes, we are. And we are so thankful. Count your blessings every day. Folks, we're going to go and eat. We hope you all... Go find and eat, I ain't stopped. <laughs> we hope you all find you something good to eat and make you some memories. Have a good time today. Say goodbye, Mama. Goodbye, Mama. God bless you and so. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.